In this video, I installed Chrome OS on a gaming laptop, and today I will do the exact opposite, install Linux on a Chromebook. Ever since Chrome OS started to support Linux and Android apps, I have been tempted to get one. As a Linux user, I love budget devices. I was thinking if I could install Linux on a Chromebook, I would have a thin and light laptop which doesn't cost a fortune, with green screen to look at, support Type-C charging, and can be used as a tablet. So I got one recently and tried to make it happen. The device in question for this video is the Acer Spin 14-inch Chromebook. Comes with AMD Ryzen 7 3700C CPU, 8GB of RAM, and 128GB of SSD. I chose this one because it has the x86 architect chip, which is needed by most of the applications I need on Linux. After trying out Linux environment on Chrome OS, I was not satisfied with the performance. I remember the 8th gen i5 Lenovo Carbon X1 with the same 8GB of RAM was running smoother on Linux than this. So without further ado, let's start installing Linux. A little warning before we dive in. If you're not a power user and don't mind some performance drawback using Linux, please do not follow what I do in this video, because installing Linux on Chromebook requires enabling the developer mode, which will stop the security process on Chrome OS. And if the Chrome OS is compromised, your whole system is compromised. So only do this at your own discretion. Let's first enable the developer mode. According to the article from Android Authority, I need to hit Escape, Refresh, and Power button at once. Then Ctrl and D simultaneously when the message is up. Let's try that. After several yes and no questions, the developer mode enabling process started, which took around 10 minutes to finish. After that, the full system setup was needed. Now it's time to install Linux. The first thing I tried was the Crouton Shell. It is the most popular approach on the internet. All the tech blogs are suggesting it. What it does is to run Linux distribution inside the Kiru environment. Although according to its GitHub page, it has gone into maintenance mode for some time. I decided to give it a try. The next step is to download the Crouton shell and make it executable. I'll follow the instruction from the GitHub page. According to the wiki, I can now install Ubuntu XFCE easily, but I don't really want to do that. I see there is another command in the wiki below to list all the available distributions. Let me try that. After some digging, I wanted to give Debian Bosai a shot because it is released in 2021 and has a longer lifespan. The desktop environment I chose was GNOME because this laptop is also a 2-in-1 and I like GNOME's gesture support out of the box. But when I issued a command to install them, it gave the error saying it failed to deep bootstrap. I tried several things without being able to pass this error. First, I tried installing another distribution. Second, I mounted the TMP folder as an executable path. And finally, I power washed the Chromebook. Nothing worked. After seeing all the latest open issue on Crouton's GitHub being similar problems, I started looking somewhere else. The next one is called CHRX. It provides the way to dual boot Linux alongside Chrome OS instead of running them inside Chroot. From its official website, I also learned a distribution called Gallium OS, which can be installed fully onto the machine, which replaces Chrome OS altogether. Great, I will use that as my final resort after CHRX. With 8GB of RAM on this machine and an AMD Ryzen 7 CPU, even though it was not the most powerful generation, of course, I'm gonna try Fedora first. Following the guide, I was able to run the script successfully for the first time, which was to create a Linux partition. You restarted the machine into the repair mode to do the configuration. And the second time, I used the Fedora option to install the workstation edition. The version was set to 37, which is the latest by default. But the error says the file format is not supported. I tried version 36 and changed the environment to desktop, not working either. So I turned to Ubuntu. The script worked the very first time. 
Looks like I will start using Ubuntu 22.10 very soon. Let the waiting start. The script started at 10.27 time mark and finished running at 11.02. It took around 35 minutes in total. It looks like the system is installed and it asked me to hit enter to reboot. Let's try. After reboot, I can see the additional bootloader option. The internal device will boot right into the Chrome OS. Let me now try the other boot option. The U-boot option will freeze the system. I'm not sure what happened now. I'm thinking about reboot the system. All right, it is still a blank page. I'm gonna restart the machine again. Without being able to boot into Ubuntu, it's time to try dual boot Gallium OS using CHRX. I started the script again at 11.20 and it finished at 11.52, 32 minutes this time. Still, nothing worked. Now, after some reflection, I was thinking, was it possible that CHRX failed because I set it up after Crouton's failure, which had some leftovers on the system? Well, why not give it another try with a clean slate? So I made a Chrome OS recovery USB thumb drive and restored the Chromebook to the factory state. Enable the developer mode again. This time, before doing anything, I went to the Gallium OS wiki and dig even deeper. I realized I missed something the last time. On CHRX page, the second step is to install the firmware before running the script. I didn't do that because I only saw the Intel CPU listed on their website. I didn't know AMD CPU is eligible to flash those. But this time, after going into the firmware tool page in the Gallium OS wiki, I saw there is a version of firmware suitable for AMD Picasso series CPU. So this time, I flashed that firmware before running the CHRX, and I saw the additional bootloader option when I reboot after the firmware installation. Then I did the partitioning and the system installation. With the firmware installation ahead of time, the system installation time was dramatically shorter. I was not paying attention, but it felt like around 10 minutes this time. I thought that was a good sign, and it might work, but it didn't. The same exact error showing up after I hit the Ctrl and L in the recovery screen. Finally, let me try replacing the whole system with Gallium OS, but I got stuck at the download page right away because it only has the Intel and Pixel devices version. No AMD CPU available. I checked their hardware compatibility page. If my understanding is correct, AMD is currently not supported by Gallium OS. No wonder it failed to boot. I also realized the later Intel chips are not yet supported by the system, which got me thinking again. Is it due to the unsupport kernel that dual boot Gallium OS failed just now? I tried dual boot with Ubuntu again. The answer is no, because Ubuntu also failed to boot. Finally, I made the effort to try to replace Chrome OS completely. I figured out a way to boot into the USB with my Ventway and use that to boot into Mint Life system using the compatibility mode. I started the installation right away. There was no way of installing Linux Mint without wiping out the entire SSD. So I had no idea if you would delete the recovery partition and block the Chromebook from recovering to Chrome OS. But for the people out there watching, I decided to go with it. Worst case scenario, I get a properly bricked machine, which is at least somewhat cheap. Let's see what happened during the reboot after installation. Thank God the recovery screen is still here, but internal disk boot up option is no longer working, which is expected. I tried additional bootloader Tiano, and it seems to be able to boot into Mint system, but the display is not rendering correctly to be usable. And that is where I decided to stop and restore the system back to Chrome OS, because I think I covered all the scenarios and none of them worked for me. I know maybe I can fix the Mint display by changing the Grub boot up option, but it might be too much of tinkering for the average Chromebook consumers. So here's the squirrel picture again for everyone that is waiting. My original idea of buying this laptop was to have a cheap device which can run Linux and has the USB charging support at the same time. 
but given none of the native Linux solution works, I give up. If you're also on the fence looking to get a Chromebook to run Linux, please stay away from this AMD model and make sure doing your research before pulling the trigger. The price tag doesn't justify the effort. So I'm gonna log off now and sell it secondhand. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.